is Late Edition News at 10 with Ann Gownley. Sports with Beth Mensinger. And meteorologist Joe Garbacic. Petitions presented to an area school board asking for the resignation of one of its members, and it's our top story tonight. Good evening. This is WYLN's Late Edition for Wednesday, January 22nd, 2014. I'm Ann Gownley. Petitions presented to the North Schuylkill School Board asking for a removal of one of its members. WYLN was there this evening as one man handed over 250 signatures. The North Schuylkill School Board was met with petitions tonight from residents asking for the resignation of board member Mark Kessler. Kessler, who has hit the spotlight as Gilberton's chief of police, who put up a YouTube video condemning Democrats, Gilberton council members, while shooting off automatic guns and shouting profanities. Kessler, who sits on the board, had no comment this evening about the petition. Mr. Kessler has been indefinitely suspended and therefore been removed from an office of public trust. He is therefore, by state law, ineligible to sit on this board. Thank you. The chief of a, a borough is not an office of public trust as it's defined in state law. What they're talking about is an elected position for the most part. Uh, the second part is, um, my understanding is that his suspension is being contested. And until there is a final decision by, I believe it's an arbitrator, uh, he has not been removed legally. So we're not there in either case. 250 people had signed the petition, and resident John DeLowry explained why they wanted to present the petition to the school board. Mr. Mark Kessler, in his uh, social media kingdom, has basically started a war with anybody who disagrees with him. Um, his actions towards anybody who opposes him is just deplorable. Um, I believe in his right to have his opinion on things, and he is more than, uh, that's his right to, to speak his mind, but the way he does it is just, it's, it's not morally good for any school board member to act that way. In his speech, DeLowry says that there are many district residents that he believes are more qualified, open-minded, educated, modest, and most of all have integrity to take his place. DeLowry says that he believes Kessler has every right to his own opinions, but doesn't make it right for him to post everything on social media where students in the district can see it. He's using Twitter, he's using Facebook, he's using his personal website just to go out and, uh, like I said, he, he spews profanity. And, and trust me, I'm not... I'm not, uh, you know, not guilty of that. I use profanity a lot, actually, and uh, I think other people are guilty of that as well. But um, just the things he does after the fact, he, he like you said, he'll, he actually sat in front of my house, um, intimidated my family, uh, intimidated others online. Uh, matter of fact, we had a gentleman here tonight uh, sitting behind me trying to intimidate me from behind. Uh, I will not stand for it, and I will just keep coming to every board meeting until something's done about it. No one on the school board commented after tonight's meeting. The next North Schuylkill School Board meeting will be held on February 26th at 7 p.m. Around 6 o'clock this evening, a car ended up in a front yard of a house along South Church Street in Hazel Township this evening. A dark gray Jetta lost control on Route 309. According to fire officials, the car was heading south and hit an icy spot. The car landed on top of trees and brush in the front yard of 1039 South Church Street. Two people were taken from the scene to Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton. The driver of the car was entrapped, and firefighters said they had a hard time getting to the driver because the driver's door and back door had been taken off. Hazel Township Fire, along with McAdoo and APTS ambulances, assisted at the scene this evening. The teacher at Hanover Area High School accused of sexual contact with a student will now have his day in court. 33-year-old Edward Evans of Hanover Township was a district judge judge... Joseph Hallisay's office this morning. Evans is charged with two counts of institutional sexual assault with a then 17-year-old student at Hanover area. We spoke with Assistant District Attorney Jennifer Roberts after the hearing. We just wanted to provide enough evidence to the court today to show that there was direct contact with the defendant being a teacher at Hanover area school and the victim being an actual student at the school. The issues that we have in this case are not uncommon to the issues that we have in the vast majority of sexual assault cases where there is a point when 
victims feel pressure and sometimes they do make some type of statement to recant their original statement just because of the, the pressure and the nature of the case and their fear of what could happen to the perpetrator. Evans' attorney was unavailable for comment when asked Roberts would not say whether there were any other victims, just that the investigation is continuing. The Wyoming Valley West School Board accepted the resignation of teacher Lauren Harrington Cooper at this morning's work session. Cooper was charged in December with one count of institutional sexual assault. She allegedly had several encounters with an 18-year-old student. She also was charged with a new count of the same crime earlier in January in connection with a 17-year-old student, both from Wyoming Valley West. According to Superintendent Charles Suppon, she waived her right to respond to any of allegations. The board voted unanimously to accept her resignation. Hazleton's chief of police is finally speaking out about several arrests that have been made over the past few months after being instructed by Pennsylvania's attorney general not to speak. Today, he was able to address the Hazleton Rotary Club along with the media. Back in March of last year, Hazleton Chief of Police Frank D'Andrea was invited for a sit-down meeting with Pennsylvania's Attorney General Kathleen Kane to talk about her idea of a mobile crime unit. Now, months later, that idea became a reality, and its first target, Hazleton. Throughout several investigations, Chief D'Andrea and the rest of the police department was asked to not speak with anyone about the arrests and the investigations. D'Andrea called it a media blackout and was able to finally address the public and the media today at a Hazleton Rotary meeting. Naturally, in, in any undercover operation, the last thing that you want to be doing is announcing that you're conducting an undercover operation. So in, in discussions early on and then once we were ready to do a, a soft deployment, we came to an agreement that there would be no discussion and almost no mention of the Attorney General and the Attorney General's task force while they were in fact working undercover and building their investigations. In the last six months, most of the big narcotic arrests were completed because of the Attorney General's office in cooperation with the Hazleton Police Department. Don't think for a second that HPD was not 100% dedicated to this operation because my entire narcotics unit, my detectives unit, and anytime I could, my patrol unit members, as well as two to three times a week, my special operations group has been assigned and deployed with the AG Region 10 Impact Unit. This is truly a team effort. One incident in particular was an arrest of two people from Montgomery County a month and a half ago. DeAndrea says the reason for finding them, arresting them, and getting a confession was due to the AG's office. Now that we're allowed to take the lid off, the true credit for that entire investigation certainly goes to the AG's office and Region 10. And we took murderers off the street. You know, we've recovered weapons. Uh, we've recovered, that was the safe job and the shooting that went bad. And we've recovered the safe. And we had them, you know, two great arrests. I probably would never even have known that those people were hiding in Hazleton had I not had the task force here. The state police crime lab has even said to DeAndrea that with all of these arrests, they are inundated with large amounts of heroin busts. Although the mobile street crime unit will not be sticking around in the Hazleton area for much longer, according to DeAndrea, the department has learned a great deal of information, and when they leave, the arrest will not end, saying the department is better than ever before. We, as a police department, will never give up or give in, and I, as the chief of police, will refuse to ever give up. I love this town, and this, this is our job. My hat is off, too, and all the credit certainly goes to the attorney general for coming up with this idea. Throughout this whole process, DeAndrea says there are many people to thank and is proud of every member of HPD. I don't think in my entire law enforcement career I've ever been as proud as I am today to be the chief of police in the city of Hazleton and work with these men and the task force for Region 10. The only thing that today makes me more proud than just being the chief of police in the city of Hazleton, which is an honor, is the fact that I am so proud to be a chief in the General's Army.
Anyone with information about illegal activity happening within the city of Hazleton is asked to contact police immediately at 570-459-4940 or dial 911. A Plains Township man is being sent to trial for criminal homicide. Magisterial District Judge David Barilla ruled that there is enough evidence to charge 39-year-old Bryant Pavia for, shooting the de for the shooting death of 38-year-old John Dulski. The incident occurred during a fight over a snowblower in December. Pavia's attorney requested that the charges be dismissed, but Barilla denied that request. Wilkes-Barre police have released a surveillance photo of two suspects involved in an armed robbery outside of McCarthy's Tavern on Northampton Street. The incident occurred on January 18th. The victim of the robbery stated that he was approached by two black males while sitting in his vehicle after leaving the tavern. One of the suspects pointed a black semi-automatic handgun at the victim's head and demanded money. They took $50 and the victim's military ID, then fled on foot on East Northampton Street. Anyone with information is asked to call Wilkes-Barre City Police at 570-208. 4224 or 570 208 A 2014 budget amendment package was proposed by Luzerne County Council Vice Chairman Edward Berminski at last night's meeting. The package could reduce the 8% tax hike to nearly 2%. Some of his suggestions are to sell the former Valley Crest Nursing Home property, sell timber rights on county land, implement an emergency and energy efficiency plan to reduce utility costs, offer employees an early retirement incentive, and reduce the county's $510,000 allocation to the county transportation authority. County Chief Solicitor David Pedry said they should be reviewed by the administration. The amendments must be publicly advertised and a public hearing is also required before the February 15th Home Rule Charter to amend the budget. Council plans to discuss the amendments at next Tuesday night's meeting. If the majority of council wishes to proceed with the public hearing, it will be scheduled. As we reported to you last night, a Texas-based developer, Trammell Crow Company, is seeking to bring a 2.3 million square foot distribution center to the Hanover Township. Industrial Park Company Principal Andrew Mealy met with Luzerne County Council last night. A proposal was submitted to extend a tax-exempt Keystone Opportunity Zone for the warehouse complex. Some council members said that extending the KOZ would be a financial hardship for the county. Mealy told council that the county would get $1 million in improvements along with New Commerce Boulevard plus a payment of 110% of the required property taxes for 2013. Trammell Crow has already received approval from Hanover Township and the school district. County Council is expected to vote on the proposal at the January 28th meeting. Thursday night, the Hazleton Area School Board is expected to pass a resolution to set the tax index. On the board's agenda, they will vote to set the tax index for the 2014-15 school year budget. The resolution indicated that the Hazleton Area School District will not raise real estate taxes above the Act 1 index of 2 0.9% for the 2014-15 budget. Now, WYLN's Gary Perna will be at the school board meeting Thursday night, and WYLN is also taping that meeting and will broadcast it the following afternoon. Did anyone crack the code to win a car or $20,000 today? Well, it was all part of the Hazeltonopoly promotion, and our Gary Perna has all the details. The popular board game Monopoly, which was turned into Hazeltonopoly, hit the greater Hazelton area just in time for Christmas. But the Community Awareness Committee of the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce said the game is still for sale. And the feedback they got about the game has been great. Alan Wagner is the chair of the committee. Well, as part of the Hazeltonopoly game this year, we had Burger Family dealerships take a space on the board. And then to help promote the game at our, rather, at our different events, um, Mr. Burger was able to have a prize vault where people got to put in six numbers and a chance to win a car or twenty thousand dollars so the prize vault was very helpful everywhere that we were selling the games to attract people the chamber teamed up with burger family dealerships to give those who bought the game a chance to win a car or twenty thousand dollars all they had to do was guess the code to this safe owner of burgers earl burger said it was a great way to give back to the community and bring the community together Okay, we got involved with this with uh, the chamber to try to promote the Hazelton area businesses, which a lot of them took uh, spaces on the Monopoly game, Hazeltonopoly, and uh, we had the car that they could come in and win, have a chance to win a car. No purchase necessary. 
and it was to, actually to pull the Hazelton community together with the businesses and make some money for the chamber and the local area. The game was created by one point out of Scranton. And this is one of four games that was created based off of the famous Monopoly. We did This year we did uh, four um, Monopoly games. We did Hazleton, Bucks County, Philly, and Lehigh Valley. And they, this is the only area where somebody was, you know, sponsored this. This was a great promotion here. The whole Hazleton area was really uh, behind it. Wagner said the chamber also gave back to local nonprofits. Well, this was a great event for the chamber because over the holiday season we were able to sell thousands of these games. And also we had a lot of nonprofit organizations locally because they were able to get the games for $15 and sell them and make $5 a game for themselves. So we were also able to help many of the nonprofits locally. The board game is still on sale. Oh, and by the way, no one did crack the safe. And the winning code was. Six seven six three four two in Hazel Township for WILN's late edition. I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. The Schuylkill County United Way received a $400 donation from First National Bank. The funds are slated to go towards its annual campaign. William Folk of the Schuylkill United Way accepted the check from Karen at Kenderin and the and Tara hear her from First National Bank. The United Way partners with 15 other agencies to provide essential programs and services to people throughout the county. Two new board members also joined the organization, Denise Ressner and Charles Dodson. The two were welcomed to United Way at its January board meeting. Anyone wishing to make a contribution can visit Schuylkill County United Way .org. Tonight, our Gary Perna starts part one of a four-part series with State Senator David Argel, talking about what is going on in Harrisburg and the current bills that the senator is working on. Here's Gary with more. Thank you, Ann. I had the chance to sit down and speak with State Senator Dave Argel to talk about the upcoming bills and legislation that he and his colleagues in the Senate are working on. In part one of our interview, we talk about the outlook for 2014 and if he believes selling the state-owned liquor stores is a good idea. The, uh, the Senate, as you noted, we've had several voting days now. Uh, we're beginning the 2014 session. Uh, the majority leader and the president pro tem of the Senate have uh, announced to the, to the world you know, what our uh, initiatives are going to be. Uh, property tax reform was one of the first ones and so I'm, I'm thrilled. If we get one thing done this year, I hope it's the elimination of the school district property tax. That's, that's my top goal. Uh, there's also some things that we would like to do to try to encourage more job growth here in, in, in Pennsylvania because as you'd indicated, we've seen some real growth, but every time we see a good headline, someone else is closing. And so I guess that's a, a battle that will uh, will never end. But jobs, jobs, jobs here in, in this district is uh, is certainly important. Uh, they're also looking at uh, some ways maybe we can finally do something with privatizing the liquor system. We came close last year, didn't quite uh, get there, and so that's, I guess, uh, kind of a, a holdover from uh, from the past session. You brought up the liquor stores. Uh, recently, the governor said that they're, they're not going to go after um, the lottery. Um, but do you believe it's a good idea to go after liquor stores and get Pennsylvania out of that business? I, I think that there's a, a good way to do it. It's a little tricky. Of course, it takes 26 votes in the Senate. It takes 102 votes in the House. We may not be able to do everything mm -hmm. that everyone wanted, but I think we still may be able to make some significant uh, improvements in, in that system. Uh, I know one thing that's on everybody's mind, no matter who I talk to, where I go to, is, of course, the, the spending, the budget yes. of Pennsylvania. Um, I, I guess we've been hearing, I just interviewed Senator Udichek not that long ago, um, that he said some cuts could be made and, and should be made. I know you said across the aisle from him. Yes. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you know, you're looking at maybe that could cut some of the spending in Harrisburg? The, uh, the one thing that I've co-sponsored legislation on in the past is actually to reduce the size of the General Assembly. We have one of the largest, I guess, houses in the country. And please understand, I mean, the General Assembly, the House, the Senate, we only amount to less than 1% of overall state spending. But the old Boy Scout in me was taught that we should lead by example. Uh, that's why I have 
nine, nine and a half, one part-time uh, staff people when we used to have 12. And so we're not going to solve all the problems of Pennsylvania by reducing the size of the legislature, but I still think it's a good thing to do. It will save millions of dollars. I also think in terms of welfare spending, if we can cut down on the fraud and the abuse, then maybe we'll be able to help the schools more. Then maybe we'll be able to help those genuinely poor folks a little bit more. And so it, it may allow for some, some reallocation of funding, but uh, there is nothing more important than our budget vote. Uh, Senator Yudichak and I are working on a couple of different ideas to try to improve that, that process. But yes, uh, that's going to be a big battle in the, in the House and in the Senate. Now, during part two, Senator Argel will speak about a hot topic, property tax reform, and how the Senate is closer than ever before to pass Bill 76. We'll have more of that in the coming days. Gary Perna, WYLN's Late Edition. Thank you, Gary. We look forward to the rest of that series. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Time now to check in with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic outside in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center for a look at our forecast. Joe, what kind of temperatures can we expect for tomorrow morning? Well, the good news, Ann, not going to be quite as cold as what we saw earlier this morning, but I think most areas will definitely be down to single digits to near zero. A couple areas will be a little bit below zero. Not that much of a wind tonight, but just that little bit of a breeze will make it feel even a little bit colder than what the actual air temperature indicates. And I can tell you one thing now, even though there's not much wind, it is very cold as I speak. In fact, here's a look at the uh, wind chill factors throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And you can see still remaining very cold across all of our viewing area. Will we see any type of relief from this cold weather? I'll let you know with the complete seven-day forecast coming up. You work hard at fundraising events for your organization. What better way to raise awareness to your cause than to wear a custom embroidered or screen printed shirt from CTC Apparel Plus. CTC makes it easy to create t-shirts that get your message out. Not only do we have packages at different levels that are affordable, but the t-shirts will be name brand, stylish, and comfortable. All it takes is a minimum of 25 shirts to start promoting. There are no setup fees or deposits required. Call CTC today at 570-454-3754. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. Come see for yourself. They have the freshest selection of meats, cheese, and produce. Baked goods made fresh on premises. They have an in-store butcher who is happy to accommodate your special orders. Be sure to stop in and check out their unadvertised specials. You'll find them throughout the store. See their flyer for weekly specials. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. This week at Heritage, Farmer's Dairy Iced Tea Gallons, only $1.88. A helping hand. Being there when people need us most. Our health care team always gives our community their best. Merging with Lehigh Valley Health Network opens even more possibilities for all of us. More resources, specialized medical expertise, nationally recognized health care right here in our community. Together we can move medicine forward. The Greater Hazleton Health Alliance is now Lehigh Valley Health Network. Lehigh Valley Health Network. A passion for better medicine. Attention Paxil and Zoloft users. The FDA has associated the use of certain antidepressants with birth defects. If you took Paxil, Zoloft, or other antidepressants such as Celexa, Lexapro, Effexor, Prozac, or Pristique while pregnant and your child was born with spina bifida, PPHN, heart, cranial, or limb defects, or other serious birth defects, you and your child may qualify for financial compensation. Call the Rely on Group at 800-625-1121. Are you tired of being overweight? Do you have food cravings? Do you get tired during the day? Do you have problems sleeping at night? Do you exercise but can't lose the weight? Have you tried every new diet? Fat-burning hormones working for you or against you? If you're ready for some answers, call 218-0002 and register for a free weight loss seminar from Rodman Natural Health Solutions. You can learn how to finally lose your weight and keep it off. Seating is extremely limited, so call 218-0002 now or go to drrodman.clubreduce.com. WYLN TV 35, first in live sports. Join Marty Burns, Joe Melfi, and the entire WYLN sports team as we bring you the best in live local sports. 
WILN TV 35 has it covered. WILN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. Well, it's going to be another cold night across our viewing area through the overnight hours. Not quite as cold as what we saw last night, but still temperatures generally getting down to near zero and uh, single digits in some areas. It will be a little bit below zero. Still got some of those uh, wind chill advisories in effect for parts of our viewing area through the overnight hours, especially Carbon and Monroe counties. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, really nothing to show you at this time. It is fairly quiet, except it's very cold, but we're going to remain fairly quiet through the overnight hours. Well, we're in a single digits, practically zero. Before all is said and done, I think, especially here on a mountain right here in Hazleton, I think we're going to drop down slightly below zero through the overnight hours. And uh, the winds will die down generally under five miles per hour, but it only takes a little bit of a breeze out there, and that's going to make it feel colder than what the actual air temperature indicates. So again, through tonight, there's going to be uh, many areas where wind chill factors, including into early tomorrow morning, will still feel like they will be below zero. So as a result, again, a lot of schools may be on some delays. Some are already and uh, maybe some more adding on to that list um, that's out there throughout northeastern and central Pennsylvania for early uh, tomorrow morning because it's going to be another cold start to our morning. And you can see just how cold it's been over the past 24 hours. Getting down to minus five in Wilkesbury. How about Mount Pocono? Getting down to minus nine degrees and just did not warm up much across the northeast many areas struggling to make it out of the single digits elsewhere temperatures getting into the teens temperature I, here, here's a case in point where it is below zero already in new angola it's minus one five degrees in berwick four in monoy city six in bloomsburg and seven degrees in danville here's a look at our satellite and radar it is quiet across the northeast. A few clouds here and there, but other than that, no storm systems to talk about. Now, as we head through tomorrow, I can't rule out some flurries, can't rule out the possibility of a couple of snow showers coming into play across our region, maybe enough to uh, uh, whiten up the ground a little bit more, maybe even a roadway, so be careful out there. But again, no substantial amounts across our region. Here's a look at the uh, wind chill value ranges as we go into tonight. Again, most areas, every location will be a little bit below zero. Even heading into early tomorrow morning, it's going to be very cold out there. And uh, again, we're going to be looking at another stiff wind coming in, the possibility of it for Friday morning. And you can see, again, it's going to even feel much colder, I think, as we go into Friday morning. Here's a look at the actual numbers, temperature values as we head through tonight. Again, single digits to near zero, some areas slightly below zero, and then getting up into the teens as we head into the daytime hours of tomorrow and then tomorrow night dropping back down into the uh, single digits to near zero degrees. This system weakens a little bit but can give us a few snow showers, a few flurries across our area and we continue to deal with that polar vortex. Boy, it just can't get rid of it. It's going to be sticking around and indications are at this point we may be holding on to it until at least the beginning part of next month. Yeah, I can't believe I said that either. But it's true. All right, so uh, single digits, some sub-zero readings for tonight, tomorrow, getting up into the teens. Extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys Division of Arc Electric. Here's a look at what we can expect over the next uh, several days. 11 for tomorrow as well as Friday. And some snow showers and snow squalls for Saturday, 23 for Sunday. And then it gets colder once again going into next week. And you can see once again some of those overnight lows could be dropping down below zero. Evening Pennsylvania Lottery numbers, a daily 668, the big four, 2180. Quinto numbers looking like this, 40597, and the cash five, 511, 15, 39, and 40. We'll have more late edition coming up after these commercial messages. Managing risk is more than just buying an insurance policy. 
At Dreyfus, our approach is different. We have 25 risk management professionals who have the tools and experience to help our clients avoid and survive unexpected events. We can help you with risk transfer, OSHA requirements, safe workplace, cybersecurity, and claims management. All of these go well beyond an insurance policy. We're also independent, so we can access dozens of insurance carriers like Grange Insurance, who can insure your auto, home, business, and life. Dreyfus Insurance since 1901 and Grange Insurance since 1935. We're committed to helping you manage risk. Bad credit? No credit. No problem. Valmont Auto Sales on Route 93 in West Hazleton can help. At Valmont, they offer a variety of clean and fully serviced cars, trucks, and minivans. Valmont offers easy credit. Buy here, pay here. They offer low down payments, same day approval, and all their vehicles are only $65 a week. They are locally owned and operated. Call Jerry or Joe today at 501-2626. Valmont Auto Sales located on Route 93 near Arby's in West Hazleton. Weatherwood is a privately owned 200-bed nursing and rehabilitation center. Nestled within the quiet town of Weatherly, PA, we offer our residents and their families tranquil and scenic views from just about anywhere in the building. We are located within minutes of Hazleton General Hospital as well as major metropolitan medical and trauma centers in the Lehigh Valley. Whispering Meadows is a 50-bed secured dementia unit within our facility. Whether you need short-term, long-term, or respite stay, call or stop by today for a tour. On the way to retirement, some people realize that work isn't really a bad thing. Some may want to start their own business one day. Our financial advisors will look at your complete financial picture, no matter where your money's invested, to create a plan designed to help you get to and through retirement. When you need a financial advisor fully invested in you, turn to us, Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Clays course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazleton and just one hour from Allentown, Reading, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rockland, 384-2314. WYLNCA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. Tonight we were in Shenandoah for some Schuylkill League girls basketball highlights. It was a cross-divisional matchup between the Lady Miners of Minersville and Shenandoah Valley. The Lady Miners have been mopping teams off the floor in Division Two and are undefeated so far this year in the league. Chris Conroy's Lady Devils are 500 in Division Three with a 4-4 four four record. First quarter, SB up 3-0 early before Junior Abigail Snitzer absolutely goes off. She'll nail her first three ball of the night. Next possession, same girl, same spot, same result. Snitzer with another three, and it is not a deja vu. I don't know where this Minersville defense was at first. Snitzer for three again. Lady Devils leading 12 to five. Lady Miners ball, Abby Schofstel. She dribbles into the lane, loses her handle a bit, but quickly gets it to Frosh. Emily Mealy. Under the basket, other end, Melissa Jones finds Snitzer inside, this time on the block. She backs up, turns around, lets it fall. It's 19-11 Shenandoah. Second quarter, Miners passing the ball around quick. Mealy inside, she will knock down a jumper of her own. Some confusion will be right here. The Riley Malochik save. She'll get the ball back, looking up to a wide-open Mealy, who will finish again, cutting the SV lead to six points, then wide open in the quarter. Melissa Jones will knock down the three. Miners will, will go on a 20 to nothing run in the second and the third quarter and will get the road win 58 to 53. Riley Malochik had 21 for the Miners. Snitzer drops 18. Some other scores from around the Schuylkill League in girls basketball. First, the Lady Bears win over Schuylkill Haven 45 18. Pine Grove fell to the Lady Tide by 10. One boys who was final in. Colts fell to Williams Valley 62-46. And we have two wrestling finals also in tonight. North Schuylkill keeps rolling on the mat. 
They defeat Pottsville 39 25, and Tamaqua Squad suffers a tough loss to PGA 54 to 30. When I get back in a few minutes, I'll have more basketball highlights, and it is a good matchup in the Wyoming Valley Conference. Stay tuned, and coming back with more top stories next. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated at 542 North Wyoming Street in Hazleton, serving the greater Hazleton area since 1890 and still family owned and operated, offers convenient parking, handicapped accessibility, seating for over 150 people, casket, cremation, product showrooms to accommodate traditional cremation and pre-planned funerals. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated, 570-454-3341. At Cuck's Turkey Farm, we are family owned and operated for over 45 years, and we consistently strive to produce premium poultry. We offer the finest all-natural country poultry, antibiotic-free, all vegetarian fed with superior white meat yield and exceptional flavor. So we invite you to experience the unique natural taste of our poultry for your enjoyment and your health. Give us a call or stop in today. Wouldn't it be great if everything in life were fast? Fast like a cable modem. Call Service Electric now and get the fastest internet in town. Plus, when you sign up today, you'll also get free installation. Experience the blazing speed of Service Electric high-speed internet service. Your internet will never be the same. Join us this week on Wellness Through Physical Therapy when Ching O explains to us what chronic pain is and how you can manage it better. It's all coming up this week on Wellness Through Physical Therapy. Join us. Petitions presented to the North Google School Board asking for a removal of a school board member. W. Island was there as one man was asking for 250 signatures and presented it to the board. The North Schuylkill School Board was met with petitions tonight from residents asking for the resignation of board member Mark Kessler. Kessler, who has hit the spotlight as Gilberton's chief of police, who put up a YouTube video condemning Democrats, Gilberton council members, while shooting off automatic guns and shouting profanities. Kessler, who sits on the board, had no comment this evening about the petition. Mr. Kessler has been indefinitely suspended and has therefore been removed from an office of public trust. Is therefore by state law ineligible to sit on this board. Thank you. The chief of a, a borough is not an office of public trust as it's defined in state law. What they're talking about is an elected position for the most part. Uh, the second part is on, my understanding is that the suspension is being contested, and until there is a final decision by, I believe it's an arbitrator, uh, he has not been removed legally. So we're not there in either case. 250 people had signed the petition, and resident John DeLowry explained why they wanted to present the petition to the school board. Mr. Mark Kessler, in his uh, social media kingdom, has basically started a war with anybody who disagrees with him. Um, his actions towards anybody who opposes him is just deplorable. Um, I believe in his right to have his opinion on things, and he is more than, uh, that's his right to, to speak his mind, but the way he does it is just, it's, it's not morally good for any school board member to act that way. In his speech, DeLowry says that there are many district residents that he believes are more qualified, open-minded, educated, modest, and most of all have integrity to take his place. DeLowry says that he believes Kessler has every right to his own opinions, but doesn't make it right for him to post everything on social media where students in the district can see it. He's using Twitter, he's using Facebook, he's using his personal website just to go out and, uh, like I said, he, he spews profanity. And, and trust me, I'm not 
I'm not, uh, you know, not guilty of that. I use profanity a lot, actually. And uh, I think other people are guilty of that as well. But um, just the things he does after the fact. He, he like I said, he'll, he actually sat in front of my house, um, intimidated my family, uh, intimidated others online. Uh, matter of fact, we had a gentleman here tonight uh, sitting behind me, trying to intimidate me from behind. Uh, I will not stand for it, and I will just keep coming to every board meeting until something's done about it. No one on the school board commented after tonight's meeting. The next North Schuylkill School Board meeting will be held on February 26th at 7 p.m. Around 6 o'clock tonight, a car ended up in a front yard of a house along South Church Street in Hazel Township. A dark gray Jetta lost control on Route 309. According to fire officials, the car was heading south and hit an icy spot. The car landed on top of trees and brush in the front yard of 1039 South Church Street. Two people were taken from the scene to Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton. The driver of the car was entrapped and firefighters said that they had a hard time getting the driver out because the driver's door and back door had to be taken off. Hazel Township Fire along with McAdoo and APTS ambulances assisted at the scene this evening. The teacher at Hanover Area High School accused of sexual contact with a student will now have his day in court. 33-year-old Edward Evans of Hanover Township was in District Judge Joseph Hallisey's office this morning. Evans is charged with two counts of institutional sexual assault with a then 17-year-old student at Hanover Area. We spoke with Assistant District Attorney Jennifer Roberts about the hearing. We just wanted to provide enough evidence to the court today to show that there was direct contact with the defendant being a teacher at Hanover Area School and the victim being an actual student at the school. The issues that we have in this case are not uncommon to the issues that we have in the vast majority of sexual assault cases where there is a point when victims feel pressure and sometimes they do make some type of statement to recant their original statement just because of the the pressure and the nature of the case and their fear of what could happen to the perpetrator. Evans' attorney was unavailable for comment. When asked, Roberts would not say whether there were any other victims, just that the investigation is continuing. The Wyoming Valley West School Board accepted the resignation of teacher Lauren Harrington Cooper at this morning's work session. Cooper was charged in December with one count of institutional sexual assault. She allegedly had several encounters with an 18-year-old student. She was also charged with a new count of the same crime earlier in January in connection with this 17-year-old student, both from Wyoming Valley West. According to Superintendent Charles Supon, she waived her right to respond to any allegations. The board voted unanimously to accept that resignation. Hazleton's chief of police is finally speaking out about several arrests that have been made over the past few months after being instructed by Pennsylvania's attorney general not to speak. Today, he was able to address the Hazleton Rotary Club along with the media. Back in March of last year, Hazleton Chief of Police Frank D'Andrea was invited for a sit-down meeting with Pennsylvania's Attorney General Kathleen Kane to talk about her idea of a mobile crime unit. Now, months later, that idea became a reality, and its first target, Hazleton. Throughout several investigations, Chief D'Andrea and the rest of the police department was asked to not speak with anyone about the arrests and the investigations. D'Andrea called it a media blackout and was able to finally address the public and the media today at a Hazleton Rotary meeting. Naturally, in, in any undercover operation, the last thing that you want to be doing is announcing that you're conducting an undercover operation. So in, in discussions early on and then once we were ready to do a, a soft deployment, we came to an agreement that there would be no discussion and almost no mention of the Attorney General and the Attorney General's task force while they were in fact working undercover and building their investigations. In the last six months, most of the big narcotic arrests were completed because of the Attorney General's office in cooperation with the Hazleton Police Department. Don't think for a second that HPD was not 100% dedicated to this operation because my entire narcotics unit, my detectives unit, and anytime I could, my patrol unit members, as well as two to three times a week, my special operations group has been assigned and deployed with the AG Region 10 Impact Unit. This is truly a team effort. 
One incident in particular was an arrest of two people from Montgomery County a month and a half ago. DeAndrea says the reason for finding them, arresting them, and getting a confession was due to the AG's office. Now that we're allowed to take the lid off, the true credit for that entire investigation certainly goes to the AG's office and Region 10. And we took murderers off the street. You know, we've recovered weapons. Uh, we've recovered, that was the safe job and the shooting that went bad. And we've recovered the safe. And we had them, you know, two great arrests. I probably would never even have known that those people were hiding in Hazleton had I not had the task force here. The state police crime lab has even said to DeAndrea that with all of these arrests, they are inundated with large amounts of heroin busts. Although the mobile street crime unit will not be sticking around in the Hazleton area for much longer, according to DeAndrea, the department has learned a great deal of information, and when they leave, the arrest will not end, saying the department is better than ever before. We, as a police department, will never give up or give in, and I, as the chief of police, will refuse to ever give up. I love this town, and this, this is our job. My hat is off, too, and all the credit certainly goes to the attorney general for coming up with this idea. Throughout this whole process, DeAndrea says there are many people to thank and is proud of every member of HPD. I don't think in my entire law enforcement career I've ever been as proud as I am today to be the chief of police in the city of Hazleton and work with these men and the task force for Region 10. The only thing that today makes me more proud than just being the chief of police in the city of Hazleton, which is an honor, is the fact that I am so proud to be a chief in the General's Army. Anyone with information about illegal activity happening within the city of Hazleton is asked to contact police immediately at 570-459-4940 or dial 911. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up next, Beth Mensinger is back with more sports here on Late Edition. But first, let's head back outside for a check on the weather with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center. Joe? Thank you very much, Ann. Still very cold out here in the backyard. Good thing is the winds won't be too much of a factor through tonight. For the most part, they'll die down, generally be under 5 miles per hour, but still... We're going to be looking at temperatures near zero, some areas a little bit below zero. Now, we still have those wind chill advisories to deal with in parts of our viewing area for Carbon and Monroe counties. You can see the graphic for yourself. They are in effect through tonight and tomorrow morning. I'll let you know if there's any type of relief from all of this cold weather coming up a little bit. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Why should you choose Penn State Hazleton? We have new scholarship money. There's no application fee. When you visit campus. Opportunities to do research. Students are scoring internships all over the country. You can start here and finish here. Or at another Penn State campus. We have fun. We have the Lion. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. We have the largest alumni network in the world. It's your time. Penn State. Penn State lives here. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. Attention, the diabetes drug Actos has been linked to bladder cancer. If you've taken the diabetes drug Actos and now have bladder cancer, call the Goldwater Law Firm right now. If you or a loved one took this drug and were injured, call us right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. If you or a loved one took Actos and were then diagnosed with bladder cancer, call the Goldwater Law Firm at 800-414-3700. That's 800-414-3700.
third base luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. Hello, I'm Tiffany Cloud. Speaking with my loyal viewers over the past year, two subjects are constantly on their minds, taxes and crime. This week's discussion will focus upon crime. I'll be joined by Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis, who will be taking us through a year in review and sharing her priorities for the year ahead. This week on The Storm, only on WYLN-TV 35. More highlights as promised, and it's between it's a showdown between two of the best in the Wyoming Valley Conference. The Holy Redeemer Boys Squad is tied for second in the Wyoming Valley Conference Division Two with Lake Lehman. The lone team at number one with a five and zero conference record so far this season. Gar and the Grenadiers starting it all off. First quarter, Gar's Isaiah Francis. He'll lose the ball a little bit, gets the ball back, and that will be. Brian Bannis that will get the bucket. It'll be Francis here again with the ball from the corner. The three's good, and the Grenadiers will roll. The Royals with a 69-246 final. After weeks on the signing block, the New York Yankees have signed Japanese pitcher Masa Masahiro Tanaka, a 25-year-old who has never set foot on the mound during a Major League Baseball game. The contract is for seven years worth $155 million. Tanaka played for the Rakuten Golden Eagles in Japan, and in 175 games, he went 99-35 and with a 2.30 ERA. The Yanks weren't the only club pursuing Tanaka. There was also interest from the Dodgers, the Cubs, the White Sox, and the D-backs. Former Dallas Cowboy Josh Brent was found guilty of intoxication manslaughter today in a Texas courtroom. The verdict comes after two days of jury deliberations. In December of 2012, the retired lineman was accused of driving drunk when he crashed his car, killing his passenger, friend, and Dallas teammate Jerry Brown. The 25-year-old faces up to 20 years in prison, though USA Today is reporting it's a possibility he could receive a lighter sentence of just probation. And former Tennessee Titans and backup Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Vince Young has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Young, who once signed a $26 million contract, has had some legal battles in the past few years and is fighting two lawsuits after the 30-year-old took out a $1.8 million loan during the NFL lockout a few years ago. So his attorney today filed a petition in the Houston bankruptcy court. Young played in 60 games during his seven-year career, finished with 46 touchdowns and over 8,900 yards. Young was most recently cut from the Green Bay Packers practice squad. Now let's check out tonight's national scoreboard. First up in the NBA, Sixers win 110-106 against the Knicks. Evan Turner dropped 34 for the Philly in that game. Clips dropped to the Bobcats. Bulls over the Cavs. Hawks 112, Magic 109. Celtics win in overtime in Washington, 113-111. Rockets win against the Knicks. It's Milwaukee over Detroit. The Thunder are leading the Spurs in the fourth by eight points. And the Pacers and the Suns are just getting it their start. In the NHL, both the Flyers and the Pens fall tonight. It's all tied up in Detroit with the Red Wings and the Blackhawks. That one, tie, that one is in the third. And the Flames leading Phoenix, 1-0. We have just a quick reminder for you. Tune in to our next WYLN live broadcast tomorrow night uh, as the Hazleton area Cougars are hosting the Millionaires from Williamsport. It all starts at 7.30 at the Hazleton area high school with Marty Burns and Joe DeMelfi on the call. You won't want to miss it, so make sure you tune in at 7.30. Until then, sit tight. Joe's back with more weather next. Edgewood in the Pines, located in Drums, provides the perfect scenery in any season to complement your wedding or special event. From the spectacular colors of fall, a cozy winter setting, or the plush greens of summer, Edgewood will provide a breathtaking setting for your exceptional affair. Edgewood is perfect for weddings, birthday celebrations, showers, baptism, or any special event. From small, intimate gatherings to breathtaking formal affairs, your event is certain to be an amazing experience to remember for years to come. Celebrate at Edgewood in the Pines. Managing risk is more than just buying an insurance policy. 
At Dreyfus, our approach is different. We have 25 risk management professionals who have the tools and experience to help our clients avoid and survive unexpected events. We can help you with risk transfer, OSHA requirements, safe workplace, cybersecurity, and claims management. All of these go well beyond an insurance policy. We're also independent, so we can access dozens of insurance carriers like Grange Insurance, who can insure your auto, home, business, and life. Dreyfus Insurance since 1901 and Grange Insurance since 1935. We're committed to helping you manage risk. Now, Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WILN Sports Crew and available for home delivery through J.W. Wargo Spring Water Delivery and JoJo's Beverage. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. Here are some of this week's specials. Having my mom live with me made me feel good, but I knew she needed to be with people her own age and where she could receive professional personal care 24 hours a day. We searched for a place that could continue to care for her if her physical needs increased. We found all of this plus so much more at Heritage Hill. She has a sense of independence in a loving and compassionate environment. Five levels of care assures me that she can be cared for in many years to come. Mom loves it here, and seeing her happy makes me feel good again. Things move a little slower here in DSL, Bill. Slow pitch softball is big here. Really big. There's not a fast food restaurant in town. Zero. Get the most out of the Internet. Get Service Electric High Speed Internet. Call Service Electric today to sign up. Ho, 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 ho. Slow down. Tourists. This is the time of year you have to worry about snow squalls. We get them very often this time of year, and what ends up happening is as you're traveling one area, you'll have uh, sunshine, some clouds around, not much going on. You'll encounter another area, you see a few flurries, not much going on, and then all of a sudden you get into this complete whiteout conditions where the snow is falling very, very hard. You get the blinding whiteouts, which means visibility is dropped down to practically zero. That's where you really got to be careful, especially if you're out traveling. And many times from snow squalls, we can pick up quite a bit in a short amount of time period. You can easily pick up one, two, three inches in a short amount of time period. And you know, of course, that means trouble if you happen to be out there on the roadways. Nothing to show you live, 35 Skycast Doppler. We're dry across our area, and we should stay dry through the overnight hours. Temperature-wise, it's going to continue to fall. I think before all is said and done, we're going to be looking at temperatures a little bit below zero, especially here in the higher elevations. You can see the extent of this extreme cold air from Buffalo through Dayton through Chicago. Look at Bismarck. Look at Minneapolis, where temperatures continue to remain below zero. It is now minus one in Mount Pocono, two degrees. Wilkes-Barre Strand International Airport, four in Seals Grove, eight degrees out there in the Williamsport, up in the Wyoming Valley area. Temperatures remaining in the single digits. And you can see really nothing going on no weather-wise except those uh, cold conditions. So, again, uh, some schools on delays for tomorrow. Um, there's going to be, I think there'll be quite a few, even a good shot of uh, having some delays uh, tomorrow morning because it's going to be another cold morning. Not quite as cold as what we saw this morning, but nevertheless, it's still kind of cold to be out there uh, early in the morning. And then just don't see any relief from this cold temperatures. There you can see the numbers tomorrow morning uh, near zero. Some areas slightly below zero. And then uh, the mildest air will occur this weekend. Temperatures in the 20s. And then after that, it's going to get cold once again. Some snow showers around for tomorrow and some flurries. And, boy, this polar vortex we still have to deal with. And then uh, we may have to deal with, in fact, I think we're going to have to deal with these cold temperatures. And there's no relief. Um, for the rest of this month. There's a look at the extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys, a division of Arc Electric. Pretty much cold the next uh, several days. 20s, we'll call that mild, because then it gets colder again going into next week. You're going to call that mild? Compared to 10, 11, 12, yeah. that's, yeah. <laughs> this is really, really cold. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So if we had 30s, we can call it hot. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Well, that's how we did the last way. time. Uh, I remember that. We got thirty. We got to thirty-five, and it was beautiful. And it felt, yeah, we felt like we could have been short sleeve shirts and everything. You told us not to wear flip flops, but I saw. I forgot to tell you that I did. I'm not going to say what town it was in, but I saw a person barefoot. I saw short, shorts oh. and a t-shirt. Yes, le last evening. 
Not good. Yeah. Okay. That's not good. Teach his own. It's fine. Yeah, teach his own. <laughs> All right. We'll keep an eye on this chili temps for you. If not, we will see you tomorrow, 530 Topic A and Late Edition at 10. Have a great night.